Thank you so much for, for having me. I want to thank everybody for hosting this and putting this on. You know, and I'm, um, for those who don't know me, my name is Isaiah James, 33 years old. Like I said, I'm a housing organizer. I'm a disabled veteran. I'm an activist. But first and foremost, I'm a black man in America. And as many of you have seen over these past few weeks and months, you know, the, the plight of black people in America is, is something that really needs to be heard and taken seriously. You know, we, we haven't been nearly as diligent as we know, as enough as a country at dealing with our 400 year sin, the sin of slavery and the sin of, of inequality and the sin of racial segregation in this country. And until we excise that tumor from the body, that cancer is going to do nothing but linger. You know, so I'm here to talk today about our politics in this country. And as many of you know, as I know, as everybody watching this knows, our politics is beyond broken. It is broken on both sides, Republican and Democrat. The audacity of both parties in this country to tell women when they can and cannot use their, 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 their constitutional rights over their body. And when I say that, it's because Democrats spend more money on wars than Planned Parenthood. The audacity of both parties in this country to tell black people that you should go to jail for longer. And I say that because Democrats also fund private prisons and they fund the police state. The audacity of both parties in this country to say we cannot avoid universal health care when Democrats and Republicans both fund our war machine. Well, guess what? It's time for us, the people, to be audacious. It's time for us to stand up and make our voices heard. Because like it's always been true, nobody was ever born on the top of Mount Everest. You get there one step at a time. The journey is long, it is hard, it is arduous, but it is worth it when you get to the summit. And that's what Dr. Martin Luther King talked about 50, 60 years ago. That's what Brother Malcolm X talked about. That's what Fannie Lou Hamer talked about. That's what all these great men and women throughout our generations have talked about, is about moving the ball forward with each generation. Like, I'm 33 years old. I may not get to see the end of this result, but I damn sure know that we have to push. It's time for all of us to stand up and stiffen our spines and strengthen our resolves and put our backs to the wheel and move this country in the direction that it purports to be. Because our founding document was written by men who owned slaves. So that should tell you how much stock they put in the word freedom. But it says that all men and women were created equal. If that is so, if that is to ever be true, we have to make it true because change doesn't exist in a vacuum. No rights that we have were ever easily won. They are hard fought. So when it comes time for people like me in this generation, and I am so proud and honored to be here, and you see there's people from all walks of life, comedians, actors, political scientists, professors, because that's what it is. This is a, a movement. This is a movement saying that the people have had enough. You don't have to be Republican to, to, to like this movement. You don't have to be Democrat to like this movement. All you have to be is a person that is willing to say that I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I am this earth's steward because we did not inherit this earth from our ancestors. We're borrowing it from future generations. And if we want it to look like anything for our children and grandchildren, we have to start now. Because as was said before, the clock is ticking. We don't have time to wait on income inequality. We don't have time to wait on climate change. We don't have time to wait on, on criminal justice reform. We don't have time to wait. Poor people, working people, black people, brown people, indigenous people, trans folks, we don't have the luxury of sitting back and being placated anymore. We don't have the luxury of, of going to talk to our, our friends in Congress because they don't listen to us. They only listen to the big donors. So now is the time for us to stand up. And I understand that it's, it's a monumental task. It really truly is. But so was dismantling slavery, a system that had existed for 200 plus years. It's a monumental task, but so was dismantling Jim Crow, a system that had existed for almost 100 years. It's a monumental task, but guess what? It's up to the, we're up to the task. We're up to doing it. You know, I ran for Congress last cycle, not because I wanted fame, or money or exposure. I ran for Congress because I'm tired of seeing the same homeless brothers and sisters on my block. I ran for Congress because I am tired. My wife being the public school teacher, us having to scrape together whatever money we have to buy things for her classroom. 
why the NYPD's budget is $6 billion. I ran for Congress because I am tired of seeing 22 veterans die a day of suicide when our, our defense budget is $760 billion. I ran for Congress because I am tired of seeing high rise buildings go up in my community that people who look like me, who built this community cannot afford. I ran for Congress because I am tired of getting those damn messages in my, in my email box telling me that I owe hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans. I ran for Congress because I am tired of seeing women have to live in homeless shelters while we have more billionaires than any city in the world. I ran for Congress because I was tired of seeing this. And if you are tired of seeing this too, if you are fed up with our two-party corporate system that is backed by the same oligarchs and the same fascist movement, if you are tired, then I implore you to stand up and join a people's party. I, am, I, am, I implore you that because this November, I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I'm not voting for the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils is still evils. And if, if Joe Biden were to win, all it's going to do is empower the next neo-lib, the next neo-lib and the next neo-lib. We have to break the chain. We have to break the cycle. All it takes is one, a mighty oak tree grows out of a tiny seed. This is the seed right now that's being planted. And now it's up to us to water it. So when the tree bears fruit, future generations can feast from our labors. So thank you again to everybody who's here, who's stepping up, who's speaking out. Thank you for putting this, this, this panel together. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you all for listening.